Uh, so let's get into it. This would be episode 18, um, and today we have Jesse Dean, the legendary man who supplied all of us on the portable's journey <laughs> over the last few years. Um, the first time I think I saw Jesse was somewhere around 2012. Um, I had just moved to Berlin, and I saw an article, I think about, I think it was on Dubspot or something like that. Kind of a, just showing some of his highlights of his customization, talking about him. And uh, there was a Lego CDJ, I remember, that I really think it was cool that he had made. Um, I remember I kind of dug in a little bit and I you know, read up on him. I saw some of the stuff he was doing with like Techniques 12s and uh, Machine, the Native Instruments Machine gear. He was customizing them and the, the casing and the bodies and stuff and doing cool little things. Um, and around that same time, I had I had just moved to Berlin and met met a friend that was uh, the wax inspector. So he was making lots of custom faders, um, speaker boxes, and little fun doodads and knickknacks. And uh, we started hanging out. And I ordered some Frisk faders from Japan. And we saw the some guy in Japan was making these little portable faders, these keychains. So I ordered a couple, uh, one for a friend's birthday and one for myself. And um, I remember we, we got him and he was all excited to have a look because he had been testing out his own, you know, different faders or fader rails or components or boards and trying to make like a really sick fader um, for himself. And he mentioned, I remember, hey, there's this guy that I've, I've talked to a couple of times online and there's a couple other guys and this guy Jesse Dean and he's trying to make some and everybody's kind of trying out different parts. And uh, that was when he kind of popped back into my head. And around the same time we got this, you know, Frisk fader bought some velcro and we started he started building little um faders inside of like adat cassette boxes or little boxes he could anything you could get for a body of the thing right and uh and i think shortly after that jesse put out a fader that he was selling and he was like finally somebody's doing it you know selling a fader and showed me the jesse thing and brought him back to my attention again and i remember my buddy was like you know big ups to him because he hated the assembly of the faders like he'd build them for friends and and he hated having to deal to source the body of the fader, you know, to get a, a nice little box that actually fit everything well. It was a big pain. And, uh, yeah, he was always, like, against doing it commercially. He was like, there's no way I want to deal with that. It's a big pain in the ass. <laughs> so I remember when Jesse came up, he was like, these are dope. Like, and whenever people would be like, hey, could you make me a fader? He'd, no, 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 you just need to order one of those Jesse Dean ones. <laughs> They're done well. They're nice. I don't have to service it when it messes up with my hand home electronics. So, yeah. So that's kind of how he came into my peripheral. And then... I guess around 2015, a lot of friends started buying like Ions and, uh, you know, or they already had old Vestexes or the new marks, and then he would, you know, you'd Velcro the, the fader box on the side. And then Jesse started coming with the realness, like it came with the, the tone arms and, the, you know, all the start stop buttons and the Bluetooth plates with all the inputs and all that. And so, yeah, and I, I think, I feel like within a year, maybe 2016 ish, I, I don't know, my timeline might be off, but all of a sudden, like everybody had a portable. Uh, everywhere I would travel in the U.S., you know, Asia, Europe, everybody had them. Everybody had Jesse Dean components. Uh, every little local web store was stocking his stuff, and you know, friends were always pumped, like to show you their latest. I got this, and I put that Jesse Dean tone arm, and I got the newest Jesse Dean fader, and you know, all this stuff. And so yeah, it really popped off for him uh, for sure. Um, so yeah, I got to finally meet him uh, last year at the Beat Geek Weekend. That's uh, the big event, and uh, so, or was it uh, Bank Holiday? No, not Bank Holiday weekend. Sorry, it's in September. Yeah, uh, where the um, the end of September. Yeah, they they do like a two or three day event. Starts on Friday night, ends on Sunday. And they have like a big battle, the Portables Lounge battle, um, DJ City event, like meetup, and they've got vendors and big booths, and everybody's you know having a cut and hanging out. Uh, it was really really dope time. And this year they did uh, the last year they did the IDAs there as well, the UK IDAs. So it was just like a weekend of madness, plus DMC was that Saturday, so it was a really fun time, but Jesse took some time out when uh, afterwards, on, on Monday, we met up over at Simon's place and let us take over his living room. We sat down and kind of went deep on, you know, how he got into it, what he, where he grew up, <laughs> all that kind of stuff, and and then right through to up to now, and what, what he has coming out in the future with the Photon Fader and the <clears throat> NF, NF, I was going to say NF Fader, but... Uh, invader mixer 
that he's working on with Hard Rich. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, this time I'm not gonna bother to do any performance video. Um, yeah, just he's not like a super in-depth scratcher. He's more of a hobbyist, but of course he's cuts too, has a cut and he likes it. Um, so yeah, so I'll go straight into it. This is uh, us sitting down in London last year in September with Jesse Dean. Enjoy. It doesn't make a difference. No, yeah, 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 totally. This is totally informal, man. We all recorded it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sweet. <laughs> yeah. We've taken over Simon's living room for those listening, by the way. Yeah, thank you, Simon. <laughs> um, and it's a very lovely flat, by the way, and dope neighborhood. But, uh, yeah, so I wasn't sure with you what came first, like tinkering with electronics and stuff when you were young, or was it like listening to hip hop music, trying to scratch that kind of stuff, you know? Like, uh, where would it start for you in that whole fucking Jesse Dean journey? Me, uh, I started when I was a kid being broke. Yeah, yeah. I think that was pretty much it, you know? Um, and wait, where was this? What, what city did you live in? Oh, up? okay, yeah. I lived outside of Los Angeles, this little town called Lake Hughes, which Lake Hughes. is literally in the mountain, has a population of, wow. Um, 1500 mm. so i mean it's a really small little quiet town i mean the schools that we went to basically is kindergarten through eighth grade so yeah, i went yeah. there from kindergarten to eighth grade um but yeah it's not exactly you know it's not a rich town it's not a city it's out in the middle yeah, seriously rural. it's a total rural i mean yeah, yeah. rural rural or however you want to count yeah, rural rural <laughs> um yeah that was i mean that's the town i mean it was i don't know it was really boring when I was a kid, but now I look back on it, I'm really grateful I got to grow up in a place like that. Yeah. You know, so... Um, like, r like rural in the sense of, like, you know, there was farms around... No or... farms. It was actually a mountain community. Uh, so we okay. had lakes, trees... Oh, yeah, beautiful. Stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. but, you know... Massive yards, houses not directly next to each well, other. Well, actually, no. See, I lived in That's a... That's what I'm curious. I'm, I lived in a mobile home park. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. but um, when I was... When we first moved up there... Um, which was like seven miles from the town. Right, right, right. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. literally, this place was in the middle of nowhere. So <clears throat> yeah. That's my there was kids and there was people to hang around with when I was really young. And, you know, well, not super young. I think I was what, eight. No, no. Nine or ten when we moved up yeah, there. Yeah. But I lived in town prior to that. We used to ride around bikes and stuff. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. Um, otherwise, yeah, just kind of solidarity. You kind of almost yeah. come up with your yeah. own way things for sure yeah. kind of are you know which yeah. is neat um so it wasn't really electronics i guess you started out with i mean um i think it was skateboarding was a big yeah. one even though there's a lot of places to skate any concrete pads you can right, find course, yeah. you can ride, you all skate. you need is a block of something smooth yeah plus what was really cool where i lived there was yeah. some really big hills so we used to do nice. downhill yeah, yeah so yeah, that yeah, was yeah. crazy and then also bikes were super yeah, cool. yeah what years was this by the way I don't uh, know when sure I, I went, okay so when i grew up up there was 88, 1988, yeah, all yeah, the way till about... So you were born in 80, 81 or something? No, like I was born in 79. Yeah. So I'm old. I'm, 80, I'm 81. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that big of a difference. So I just turned 40, everybody. Yeah. So yeah. I'll see the gray man. It's called Wisdom Hair. <laughs> I, I wish. But, um, yeah, so that that part... And um, BMX bikes and, like, tweaking yeah, yeah. them out. And... So that's pretty much actually what it was. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we didn't have a whole lot of cash. So what we would do is what we what I did get, I usually wrenched on it, fixed it up, made it as nice as yeah, I could, yeah. and flipped it for something Yeah, better. yeah, totally. So I'd have, like, say, I know this, all like, about that. Yeah. piece of crap Huffy, you know, I'd basically sit there and spend time. Sand it down. Sand repaint down, it. Yeah. repaint it, make it look really cool, yeah, make all the wheels yeah. all shiny with some steel wool and some other shit, loop it up, make sure everything worked good. And people, oh, that's a cool bike. I'll trade you. So I get like a GT Dino from a, a kid that had money or yeah, the parents yeah, gave to him yeah. that was all jacked up because they didn't take care of it, <laughs> and I would f then flip that, then flip yeah. that. But that was some bikes, and then um, then uh, I got into RC cars, like radio control cars. Uh -huh. Then I started getting pretty good at that, and then I started getting some not mild sponsors, but just people that would kick us down because I was always at the yeah at track the, the like, track things yeah. like you uh, Lancaster, which was. About 30 minutes, 35 minutes from where I live. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go down there and we do this. And then some guy's like, oh, yeah, we make batteries. You want, you know, I'll hook you up with a couple batteries. Because you're like, nah, this is where, you know, it's running. Yeah. And it just started picking up from there. And it's just wrenching me you out know, working all those things mechanically. Yeah, and they're, they're small as well. So they're like getting in there. Well, and... even then, you know, you're talking about early 90s, though. Yeah. So we're talking about the gold pan RC10s, you know, that were all yeah, gold. Yeah, 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 and, you know, yeah, all yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And yeah. the truck ones came out and all that stuff. So. That kind of led to that, and then as I got older, you know, I obviously wanted to get a car, so I had all my RC stuff, I ended up selling that stuff off, and then I got a, 
like truck. It was like a '62 Econoline van oh, truck. Cool. Yeah, so it was like really a half cool. van, half truck yeah, yeah, one yeah, yeah, of the yeah, old yeah, Fords. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a basket case. I picked that up for like seven hundred bucks. I remember my uh, my uncle pitched in half for my birthday, which was three fifty, which was awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah, I had to come up with the other half. That was the only way you can get a car, and it didn't even run. Yeah. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So it's not a lot of work to be done. Oh yes, yeah, so I had to rip that whole thing down and do all this stuff. You know, go through the motor. You know, go through. You know, fix the carburetor. It fix everything. You know. Yeah. Redo yeah. all the brakes on it. Redo yeah, all yeah, the yeah. stuff. But yeah, man. But I made it run, and I used to. Then I drove it to school. And of course, school for us, or for me, where I lived, was forty-five minutes away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So driving, I, right? yeah, yeah. Or no, 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 no. Driving was yeah. forty-five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So before that, though, I mean, school would start at eight o'clock in the morning, but I had to actually catch the bus at yeah, yeah. five forty. Yeah. Okay. So then, <laughs> and then before the, then after I got off the bus, I was the last stop on the bus. So I wouldn't get home till like four twenty five, yeah, four thirty. Yeah, really. So you're looking at almost a twelve hour day just yeah. to go to school. So it got really old fast. Um, especially if you know you're in your teens, you want to go do other stupid shit besides of course. school. Yeah, yeah. So that's constantly, where that part is. Constantly skipping class. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I try not to, you know, because my parents were pretty pretty hardcore on having an education. Yeah, so yeah. you know, if you skipped class, they would see that reflection in your grades in a lot yeah, of cases. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> or attendance. Yeah. So uh I mean I do gotta give my parents the best because they did the best they could mm. what they had, you know. Yeah. So I mean I look back on it and it's it was awesome, you know. So that as kid wise, I mean, I I was really mechanically apt. I yeah, had yeah, really yeah. good mechanical aptitude. And I, like, what? Because for me, I, when I was a kid, I, I got into dirt bikes in like the teenage years, and I was like buying like a two hundred dollar, two hundred dollar dirt bike that I could barely afford, you know. And then like have to replace everything, like you said. And I would go to the library and check out the the mechanics guide books because they had them like the guide books to all the engines. Right. Yeah. But yeah. Like, like the yeah. Chilton's and stuff and, like that. Yeah, yeah. There was no like YouTube video. No, there was like, no. YouTube. No, no, there was no internet. So, there I mean, was... they like go to a mechanic and be like, "Hey, I need to get this fixed. I think. What do you think?" And they tell me a little bit, and I'd be like, "Yeah, I don't really have any money to do that. How would you do? It? You know, try See, to get them to luck, like push luck, me to show." Luckily, me, you know? man, I was actually pretty blessed because my dad. He, we always had older cars. So we yeah, always, yeah, yeah, yeah. even since I was a kid, they were always like fixing them yeah. or repairing yeah, them, yeah. Um, you know, to keep them running because you know, we couldn't afford new cars. Right, right, right. So we all actually, you know, look back, man, we had some really cool classic cars. Yeah. You know, we had like, yeah. you know, darts, barracudas, yeah, dust, yeah, yeah. All, a bunch of Plymouth Mopars. And then we had Fords, yeah, just all types of really cool old yeah. cars. So, I mean, Volkswagens, Carmagias, all types of shit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you yeah. See, my dad rebuilt Volkswagens and Karma Gears right? when I was a kid. Karma Gears and bugs. They're so cheap yeah, to rebuild. Yeah. You know, you can flip those things for I like a hundred. Remember those seatbeltless, seatbeltless Karma Gears and yeah. bugs that <laughs> they didn't even exist. The seatbelt just didn't exist. Or if the door doesn't click all the way because they have those weird cam doors yeah, and like yeah, you yeah. go around a corner and you almost just fall out. Door swing open. <laughs> yeah, you're like five years old, sitting there with no seatbelt. Watch the door swing open. It's yeah, fun. doors open. <laughs> Hang on, boy. Yeah. Uh, so basically, that's where all that generally stemmed from yeah. um but as for the building stuff and the dj thing i kind of started djing when i was uh i think 21 in 2000 and i actually went to like some outdoor party that i had friends with and they had some cd player and a generator yeah. hooked up and they're just i'm like this is cool you know this is kind of neat because i was a punk, i was all in punk rock and rock punk and, and hardcore dirt, that, like... dirt head shit you know uh -huh, like, yeah, you yeah. know Alice in Chains. Yeah, tools, so like mid nineties like too. So probably like all the no effects kind of stuff yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah, no effects. Fat and, record stuff and all yeah, that. Yeah, Dan Kennedys. Yeah, and yeah, all, yeah, you know yeah. whatnot. Yeah, I was in the same and all the ska stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, my my hometown it was like uh, the kids who were going to the punk rock shows were the same kids who were going to hip hop shows. So there's a lot of crossover with well, that. Well, it was weird because the town I lived in was predominantly, I'm going to say, it was a white little town. Yeah, you know, we had no racial afflictions. Or right, anything right, like right. That. And and it was crazy because. You know, um, we had two black kids when I grew up. One kid was named Morris, which was a really cool friend. And then we had this. But we never listened to hip-hop. Yeah. It was kind of, you know, I was a kind of a cultural void, if you will, mm -hmm. on that part. So when I went to got to high school, it was a completely different story. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then, uh, you know, 
it was completely taboo to say the N word or anything right, like right, that. Right, you know, right. I mean, that was like the biggest no no. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we just never thought of yeah, yeah, just... thought of it that way. And then when you get to high school and you get these, you know, more inner city kids um, sitting there at you know in the cafeteria playing domino, and they're like, "Domino, you know, and yeah. you're like, what? How yeah. can you say that? You're a black guy. <laughs> yeah, you're not yeah, supposed yeah. to be saying that, you know." <laughs> so that was a real shock <laughs> for me on that part. You know, I was just like. I mean, almost mortified, like, people are still using that word, and especially, you know, black guys, yeah, yeah. just slinging it around like it's nothing, and I'm all, man, this is crazy, you know? Yeah. So, kind of hip-hop for me really didn't take off until a bit later, as I got a bit older, because it was just, I don't know, I couldn't assimilate to it. Mm. It's just I didn't have any of that culture yeah, yeah, yeah. part, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess you call me Whitey. Uh, I don't know what else to say. On that <laughs> yeah, part. You know what I mean? It's it has nothing to do with not liking it or right, right, right. Yeah, it. totally. Any of that stuff, I just was never exposed to it. Yeah. yeah. So the only thing I was exposed to was like Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Come on, yeah, 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 that yeah. doesn't count. You know. Um. So after all that said and done, you know, through high school and stuff, and then I turned to my twenties, and then I then I was up at that that party, and my friends had um a little CD rig. It was a yeah. little CD rig. And it was a little new mark thing or whatever, and they're playing it. And I'm like, hey, can I try? You know, it was late at night. Nobody mm. was really caring, you know, and this and that. So I just put it on. I was listening to the headphones, and I got the other one to match up. And I'm like, cool, and moved it over. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is cool. Because, see, my, my, my family, my mom, my dad, my uncles, this and that, they're all musicians. They mm. all, like, my dad still plays trombones this day, and he's 65, you know? Yeah. And, my mom, she plays several horns and other things, and uh-huh, uh-huh. my uncles are all into all different types of stuff. So it's really like predominant in my family. I tried to pick up a musical instrument, but there was no band at my school. Yeah, they didn't yeah. offer music programs. They really didn't even offer arts. It was uh, just yeah, really yeah, simple, yeah. yeah, trimmed down school, you know. So it was kind of a thing, you know. I tried learning the piano and stuff, but there was nobody to play with. Yeah, so you kind of yeah. lose interest in it. It's like, oh, I'd rather go out and just. Playing the dirt yeah. before or do some other stuff. Same with the trumpet. I tried to pick that up. That didn't work. Um, tried to learn music. But like I said, there was just nobody to play with, with on that. And to like connect and with yeah, on it. Yeah, you know. And it was now, you know, instead it was kind of a nerdy thing. Because yeah. nobody else was doing it. Yeah. Which, yeah. you know, hindsight, I wish I did pick up piano. Right. I wish I did learn how to read music. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it, you know, it helps you down the road. Especially if you want to get into music. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, but yeah, so the DJ thing took off a little bit and I got kind of gung-ho at the time when I was 21, I had a really good job with a company called Enron. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What so what happened to those boys? Yeah, right. there, were some, there were some Houston boys. So right yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had a really good job, uh, building wind turbines, uh, for Enron. So I had really good money. Yeah. At the time. Especially being young. With yeah. I was 21 now. Yeah. We just moved out. I had my friend, you know, our rent was only like 425 a month. Split, at yeah, two, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. So I'd only come up with two hundred bucks a month, man. And yeah. So I was like, dude, yeah. So I ended up buying um some 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 uh like a Newmark CDN eighty eight thing, uh-huh. and I bought EM four sixty Newmark with the chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it was pretty expensive at the time because that was the first time actually the first CD player. Yeah, within the kind of that could scratch Uh that was the first one and later down the road i find out that elliot marks was working at newmark at that time oh really and he's the one that came up with the beat keeper Uh uh-huh okay and that's his design and he also helped with the cd the cd and 88 and the and how to do the algorithm for the scratch then right after that i think 2002 or one somewhere around there the cdj 1000 came out right yeah uh, which was just groundbreaking with actually being able to like jog forward yeah, and back yeah, yeah. and actually. Those are so, I remember those are so expensive. Oh, they were A few of my buddies who were house DJs bought them they right away, but so they were playing expensive. raves and they were getting paid to play, you know? Yeah. And, and one of the, one of the buddies had it and I was like. They were so expensive. I remember man. playing it and being like, well, this is clearly something I can never afford, so I'm just not going to even care about it. <laughs> like, right. Like try to scratch on it and stuff. Yeah. You know, I was like, that's not bad. And then, but yeah. So yeah. at that time I was, uh, you know, just goofing around with like playing uh, trance music and mm-hmm. like hard, like hard house, I guess if you will, and stuff like that. And then um, I uh, was kind of playing some party with a couple guys, and uh, this like little bar venue and stuff because I was getting more into it, yeah. and starting to you know see the local scene and stuff. 
So we basically started hosting a night at this one little bar, you know, it was on Thursday nights and it was fun. And mm. then I noticed like the really good house DJs and stuff were using turntables, you know? Yeah. So we started, then I saw, I'm like, oh, okay, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of money because Enron went under. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so I ended up picking up a pair of those, um, those Newmark TT... Yeah, was one... it the TTX or the 500 maybe? No, no, no. Or even it the was lesson. the one prior, the one with the green LED display yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with those, they were actually okay, but you mm. couldn't really scratch. Yeah, yeah, You yeah, couldn't yeah. do a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. And I really wasn't into scratching or anything at that time. We were just more into mixing records and playing house music. Right. Um, so, long story short, started getting into like getting music programs. And yeah. Reason 2.5. Actually, it was 2.0 first. 2.0, yeah. And yeah, yeah. I got 2.5 and we were balling. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, I had acid 2.0. Yeah, I, so I was doing stuff with those and the loops. Yep, yeah. and yeah. then also Fruity Loops three. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we had those, and we were basically making beats and stuff, and we we're trying to make our own music. Yeah, um, doing okay with that actually. You know, we we're basically playing a lot of our own tracks because right. where we were, it was hard to get music. I yeah. mean, granted, you had Napster and you had all Aud- these things popping up. Yeah, you know, you had um, Aud- Aud- Wire and What was another one? Audio Galaxy. Yeah, Audio Galaxy. Remember that one? They were yeah. good for more electronic music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that stuff started taking off and then, um, yeah, it was fun though, man. I mean, it was really cool, but then I started getting really serious into it and my friend had a pair of, uh, well, we ended up getting another roommate and had a pair of 1200s. So he used my mixer as 1200s. So at that time, man, I would just go now record shopping. Yeah. So I was just hard into it. Just, that's kind of one of those things I do. It's like, if I'm going to start it, I'm just going to go deep. I yeah. Mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do it to the very best I possibly can and just, just go and, you yeah. know, and if, if I fail, fine. Yeah, yeah. At least I tried. And I got some dope records know? at this point. Yeah, too. so <laughs> anyway, at this time, and this was about 2003-ish, so I sit there and just started just fucking, and that was like the downfall of vinyl. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that was like the yeah. era when vinyl was really being cut out. Like mm-hmm. you could find out record stores were closing and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, all the Tower Records closing <laughs> down and all that stuff was running. Exactly. Yeah. So um, at that time, though, I ended up having like five or six record stores I was going to in the LA area, which was like Melrose, down Melrose, mm-hmm. and places like that. And it was DMC Records, Beat Nonstop, um, other ones. And I would just go around and every Wednesday, um, I, people, they started to know me. Yeah, yeah. So Wednesdays was when the records all came in from right. all the pools and stuff. So I'd pick up my records, do all that stuff. And then um, play out that weekend if we had a show or if not, you know, the yeah. following week. And, and you just do that every single Wednesday. So you're looking at anywhere from <laughs> two records to maybe 25 records a week yeah. that you were picking up. Yeah, depending yeah, on yeah. What was being produced. But what was cool, though, is once you started to kind of get in line going of what you're looking for and what type yeah. of music... The record stores would go, okay, we know this dude's going to be buying these records. Mm. So we'll go ahead and start looking for these records yeah, yeah, and yeah, start yeah. doing this stuff or what labels are doing that yeah, stuff. Yeah, their like, buyers would be paying more attention. Right, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Or the guys on the sales guys. Most, yeah. most of the sales guys that were doing these things were the, the record owners, the shop yeah, owners. Yeah, yeah, you know, Because yeah, exactly. there's a little small, right. you know, yeah. very, yeah, what they call sure. um, Mitch or yeah, niche yeah, yeah. or whatever you want to yeah, call yeah. it, record shops. So, yeah, man, I started getting all these crazy just start building up my collection, you know, just all types of music. And then the electro scene kind of really started taking off. Mm. See, during this time was more of that, like, kind of disco style house, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like DJ Dan style stuff. Right. And yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, a bunch of those cats. So it was, it was neat, you know. And then um, about 2006, you know, I was actually doing quite a bit of stuff. I was getting booked in. Uh, Oregon, I was getting booked in Arizona, I was getting booked well, also my guy that not to have a crew but, you know, everybody has a little thing yeah, little of course, production yeah. thing or whatever so we had a couple guys and we were getting actually booked all over the place, mm-hmm. and then when we started working with these online radio stations when they first started coming out, like people were streaming yeah, and, yeah. you know, like they were doing live streams with, uh, and mixes and Winamp, shit using Winamp too, you get all those stations I have no there. idea, there's this one cat, and it was called Cali Rez and they were out of uh, San Bernardino area. Mm. And this kid was a super nerd mm. when it came to writing code. Like, he could take things, hack it up, use yeah. parts of it, and make his own stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was, 
he had some weird stuff going on. He had things where you could be mixing and they, like you could watch a DJ and then you can go into like a little casino mm-hmm. and actually play roulette and stuff like that. <laughs> all those things. So yeah, we're like, yeah, yeah. so we'd go down there. I'd go down there once a week and just do a mix set. Yeah. And then um, Serato started coming out or started taking its full. Right. right. And then we ended up getting, you know, first time I ever saw, I was like, how does that work? That is yeah, so yeah. Greek, you know, it's yeah. like. You have a laptop. It's turning and stuff, but those aren't records. What, yeah, 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 yeah. How does this work? You know, <laughs> and finally got you know wrapped my head around it, and I'm like, okay, I get it. So I end up getting that, and then um, it actually kind of freed up a lot of your time for stuff. Yeah. But what I noticed something: all that hard work you were to, to get the records or get the tracks that you were doing, and so on and so forth. I had a full time job during all this. Yeah. So. You know, I started doing these shows and doing these things because we actually had a residency down in um, in Los Angeles at uh, Circus Cisco. There's this thing they had on Friday nights called Club Red. It was at the arena, then it went to the Circus Cisco. And I noticed that, like, we were getting booked, but then all of a sudden I just noticed kids and other just younger DJs are just starting out. Or basically yeah. getting all the content I was getting now. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, it's like I put all my work in, I put this stuff in, yeah, I did this, yeah. and they're not really good DJs right. at all. And I noticed that was kind of the pinnacle point where I'm like, you know what? I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Mm. I love it. I'm good at it. I enjoy it. Yeah. But it's just, there's no reward to the work, yeah. you know? And I'm not looking for the reward, but it's just almost getting to the point like, Feeling like negative returns in a way, right? Yeah. Yeah, or just feeling like you're just another cookie or a kid right. in the cog. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, you know, another cog in the gear, you know? Yeah. So it's just, it was cool. So about 2008, I kind of wrapped that up and just stopped doing that. But at that time in 2008, um, I was also working at Guitar Center at the time. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that turned into um, getting to meet reps, getting of to course, meet all yeah. these different companies, mm-hmm. um, and, and I really worked hard at that job because yeah. I really enjoyed, you know, helping people. I yeah, just, I, I've had a few friends that worked there and one really close friend that's like a brother <laughs> and, and, and they always, they all loved it. Like, yeah, but you know, like I said, but the structure behind it and certain things at the time weren't, weren't allowing me to move mm-hmm. up in the company. Mm-hmm. And I granted like, uh, so in 2008, um, I started making my own products. I just started making my own stuff. So we started with these like wood kits for like the machine when those first came out. So Native Instruments machine, and we made these little wood things that kind of tilted it up, made it like kind of an NPC kind of right, so, like little kind of holders or stands. Yeah, the wood, or... the wood, yeah, the wood stands with yeah. like a couple rails, you know, yeah, yeah, together. Yeah. So I came up with that, and we started selling them online, and everybody bought them. They're like, these are super cool. Nice. So, um, so I started doing that on eBay, selling those, and then I started making other ones for like other Native Instruments gear, and then, and I just started making these cover plates that weren't stickers; they were just polycarbonate overlays, right? That would go over the machine mark one, and now you can colorize it. So you could buy a kit, you know, buy a wood face plate, buy right, a top plate, right, and then right, right, right. you may start making billet aluminum knobs. Yeah, because I've seen I've seen a lot of this stuff, like like on your photo gallery on your site, for example. There's all those like uh, different mixers, different machine stuff. Yeah, with the different like fronts or the wood ones. Yeah. Or the, the... So we start. I started doing that as a side hustle, and I started making billet aluminum knobs, and yeah. those were then anodized and. And stuff like that. So, and this was in 2009, 10. Yeah. So, I started doing that stuff. And it was doing all right. I was doing it, like, as a weekend thing, you know, and so on and so forth. And I was picking up. And then uh, I decided, uh, I, of course, I had turntables at the time. Yeah. Then I picked up, uh, I found a guy who's like, hey, man, give me 300 bucks for Paramark 2. So, I'm like, yeah, sweet. Yeah. Here you go. So, I gave him 300 bucks. And I'm like... I want to do something with these. Yeah. You know, I, don't, I don't want to do something with them. So I ended up ripping them apart and then did some powder coat stuff to them and made a new counterweight for the back that I liked actually bullet casings and actual piece. It looked like a revolver. Yeah, like a revolver. yeah you know, did stuff like that <laughs> and changed stuff up, made a carbon fiber tone arm and stuff like this. And this was, you know, shit, over 10 years ago. Yeah. Like 11 yeah. years ago. Um, somewhere around there. So I ended up taking that piece of gear to uh, a place in Glendale called Astro Audio, which I knew the guy, his name, his name was Davey, Davey Rocky. He's actually out of uh, Tennessee now. 
And he was originally from Tennessee, but he moved out to LA. Yeah. And uh, he also does magic. He's a magician. He's actually really good at it. Sick. But he was working at Astro. Amazing scratch guy. I mean, guy fucking scratch crazy. Um, and he's like, yeah, man, this is super cool. I'm going to show it to the boss. I'm like, cool. So I showed him the turntable. He's like, hey, can you do something for me? You know, because they wanted to basically, they, I guess they rent a lot of gear to the studio for specific film shoots yeah, and right, commercials yeah, and yeah. stuff. So they gave me a theme, and I'm like, okay, cool. And they're like, we want the long tone arm to light up. Yeah, and we're like, oh, shit, that's never been done before. Mm-hmm. So first I used a cathode tube, which was like, you know, the yeah, little, little, yeah, little yeah, yeah. And man, that dude created so much noise in that phono. It was just like, Aah. <laughs> so I'm like, how am I going to get the whole thing to light up? Yeah. The whole tube to light up and this and that. So I ended up uh, figuring out why. I'm like, oh, cool. So I found a subway straw. It was those white subway straws. They yeah. fit perfectly down a 3 8 piece of acrylic and everything. Uh-huh. And then it was just filing down the tip of an LED just right so it defocused uh-huh. and it would light it basically illuminate Spread. the whole yeah. tube so the tube it would kind of be a little bit dimmer at the end than the yeah, yeah, yeah. but overall the whole thing would light up didn't create any noise use 1.1 1. 1 and a half minutes nice, nice. it just worked out you know so yeah. we posted that I guess we were the first ones to illuminate a tone arm <laughs> and I didn't even think you know I wasn't, yeah, right, I wasn't right. even thinking about it at yeah. the time but it's kind of one of those things in yeah, the custom yeah. world that was a milestone it's like you're the first one to illuminate a tone arm Nice. Oh, sweet. Cool, you know? <laughs> and then, um, so I built these one turntables. They're called circuits. But how I did it was I did the Luminate Tone Arm. But then I had a powder coated like a pearl white. Then I got this really cool stuff. But it's called um, Hot hot something or another. Wildfire, wildfire. Wildfire. And what it is, it's a, it's a clear UV reactive paint. Uh-huh. So what I did is I stenciled on a, like a circuit pattern onto the white right. and clear that you can't see, and then when and like, I clear coated it, yeah. so if it's in a black light, also boom, all it looked like blue, yeah, 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 like yeah. Like pattern in there kind of, and stuff. Yeah, the uh, so pattern. yeah, it was kind of crazy. It looked like something out of Tron. Yeah, same you know. Thing. So people call them the Tron tables, but I call them they're circuit tables. But yeah, yeah. what was so cool about them was they actually got a lot of press, man. People yeah. were just. Kind of going ham. Nobody knew it was me that did them. Yeah. Which is fine. I'm not looking for credit, but yeah. I just, I love that people react to them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're sure. like, that's fucking rad. And then, so I built those and then I built a couple more for them and this and that. And then all of a sudden people started hitting me up. Hey man, you did those. Can you build my turntables? And yeah. this and that. And then we did like Chris Kilmore's and Incubus. And yeah. I saw the Incubus ones. The, the wood ones. The, and those yeah. were the first ones that had a dicer in those the turntable. Lo- those look really nice. Yeah. But those are the first one to ever have a dicer in the turntable. Uh-huh. Actually built. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So did that. And then, um, I saw was, the DJ mugs one. Yeah. Yeah. All those different, just, so, just yeah. all over the place, man. Just whatever. Cause once one guy sees them, they just start telling their friends. No, of course, and, yeah, it's and LA, so it's not even magic that. for that. It's too. all over, all over. So people just start calling me from just fucking everywhere, man. Which was cool. <laughs> so at this time, I sit there and uh, still working at Guitar Center. So I was like doing two full time jobs. Yeah, yeah. You know, so and you end up getting. A, uh, we went to that back to Astro Audio one night because uh, Pioneer was doing some event. And uh, yeah, I noticed you did a lot of pioneer gear. That's, that's how this landed. Yeah. So I sit there and I was talking to Dave. The, uh, I didn't even know the guy, uh, Davey, Davey Avero or Arla Vero. I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> I know it's in my phone, it's in my phone, but <laughs> Davey Dave, uh, DJ Davey Dave. Anyway, he was doing a little seminar there. I had no idea who he was, nobody even knew anything of the sort. And uh, after the show and everything, I went up there and I asked him, like, okay, so you were for pioneer? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, where can I find CDJ parts? I'm looking for chassis. Mm. I'm looking for the top covers, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Where can I find these? Like, what are you going to do with them? Well, I do customized work. I do custom work. I'm looking for parts. So I can yeah, basically yeah. build them and then sell them. Because yeah. I'd like to get into the CDJ market. And he's all, well, yeah, 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 this and that. And, I, and then I go, well, I built the turntables in the other room. You know, because we're at the Astro show. Yeah, I was telling yeah. you about the Astro ones. So... Oh, you so you did those Tron ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I saw, then all of a sudden, blink, the light just completely changed. Like, all of a sudden, the camera just stopped and made a left turn. You know what I mean? So, uh, he just goes, actually, we can help you out with this. He's yeah. like, we have a thing coming up soon. It's called the Art Mix. And what it is, is you basically were giving artists 
CDJs to basically turn them into art pieces. And then we're going to go ahead and auction them off for charity for VH1 Save the Music. Uh-huh. And I'm like, sweet, man, no problem. He's all, can you make one for like a demo piece to help with the kickoff? Right, right. Like here's a crazy that. art piece, do something. Or yeah, here's the, like, yeah, yeah. what they call it, the press piece. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. So that just kind of started that off. So we did the first one, which was called the Galactic Player. I don't know if you've seen it. That, is that the, the white one? Falcon, or no, is no, that no, the... no, no, no. The Galactic okay. Player is a white one that was mimicked after the Tron because he liked the way that Tron right, 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 that right, circuit okay. turntable. So we did it with UV reactive on it, but uh-huh. it's all in a tattooing script. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's got yeah, these yeah. like uh, like aluminum skirts around the outside of it, and it yeah. looks like it's hovering. Yeah, it's actually yeah. pretty G. I mean, I, I thought it came out really cool, and everybody seemed to love it. Right, right. Um, and granted, LED technology really wasn't at the time. Yeah. Like, you could buy LEDs, but nothing was in LED strips. Mm-hmm. Nothing was in, you know, ways where you can actually start... Just the quick, super accessible, wired up and go. Yeah, kind of yeah, none of that Now stuff you can buy those, those roll strips shit. of them with the, yeah. the pre-programmed chips and everything. Yeah, even though... But there was roll strip LED at the time, but you're also talking about it was, like... Almost thirty dollars a foot. Yeah, yeah. Now you it's know? like now it's like a, like a couple bucks for a huge roll of <laughs> yeah. things. Yeah. So you know, at this time it was a little bit more difficult. So anyway, we did that piece, and then he's like, "Oh, all right, cool. So here's your art piece." Now he gave me another one, and we did the Lego CDJ. Yeah, I saw that. So there's a red, cool, yeah, yeah, the red Lego CDJ. So uh, at the time, it was really neat. Is Lego had a thing called um, "Build It Yourself" or "Build Your Own," and it was a Lego CAD program. Oh, yeah, I didn't you, know that. Yeah, uh, it was the dopest shit I've ever seen. So what I did is I measured a Lego exactly, say, a two-dot two, two dot Lego, how long it was, how wide it was, how tall it was, and used that as a reference point mm. as to how many dots you need. So what I did is measured out the CDJ, did all that stuff, did all the calculations, how tall it was, how it was now, off these block sizes. Then I could go, okay, I need... 25 this way i need yeah, to go yeah, this yeah, many yeah, this yeah. way i need to put these curves here this and that so in this software you can actually cat out all the blocks yeah. that you need you can select the color you can select everything you want build up everything you want it to do and hit order and they send it all to you all basically nicely send you, packaged they and... send you all those parts yeah. ordered and it was a cool or it was called build by me or build i, I remember this idea this concept i never checked it out myself i definitely remember them doing this. yeah yeah, yeah. now it's gone yeah, we yeah. can't find it anymore. I guess it's just more of a pain in the ass than it was yeah. worth. But at the time, it was awesome. So yeah. I actually showed, like, because at the time, they were sitting there asking you. They gave you one of those uh, flip video cams. Yeah. And they go, hey, man, yeah. record everything as you're building this. And then do YouTube videos so you can show people the progress of it. Right. Well, I guess they did this for all the artists. None of them did it except for me. Because <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe I went to school and yeah. I follow instructions. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So if you want, you can go online and actually watch the build yeah, video yeah. as I do these this CD yeah, right? The description for sure. I mean it's it's cheesy, but you know, this is like my like very first yeah. when I was doing yeah. any of this stuff. So we did the Lego one and and I was I guess one of the only people that actually had an operational CDJ. Mm. I mean all these other guys did art pieces, but right. it wasn't yeah, operational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so every function on mine worked. Everything worked. I mean it was this. I even put this like really crazy switch thing on it, like like a pigeon switch so you can almost scratch with it if you want. <laughs> and then I built speakers out of Lego for the CDJ because yeah. I figured, all right, if we're gonna be auctioning this off, who would be buying this? Either a crazy enthusiast for a seat for a yeah, DJ, yeah, yeah, yeah. or a guy that maybe be in an office that was a DJ exactly. at one time, yeah, yeah. and it's like if it's sitting there, wouldn't you want to play a CD and put a thumb yeah, drive yeah, in yeah, and yeah, listen yeah, to yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. make it for your office player yeah, or at yeah, home yeah. or yeah. maybe in a conversational piece. Right, you know, right, yeah. so I built it to make it work with, you know, that yeah, RAM yeah. power and everything. So anyway, with this thing back to Pioneer, they were just ecstatic. They're like, "This is crazy." We were not expecting this. It's kind of like, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't know. I, I mean, you guys put, you know, millions of dollars worth of technology into CDJ 2000. <laughs> Would you want it to work? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of, it's almost sacrilegious, yeah, if you yeah. will. You know, so I did that. And then uh, after that, they go, hey, man, we got some other projects for you. I'm like, okay, what do you want to do? And he's like, First of all, Davey Davis is super, super, super uh, Back to the Future enthusiast. I mean, this guy is a nerd when it comes to Back to the Future. And he goes, hey, man, I want you to build me a DeLorean. 
I'm like, <laughs> all right, I can do that. Sure, man. Fuck it, I'll figure it out. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, I basically, yeah, man, I just, I took the whole top of the thing, pulled all the buttons off, pulled everything out, and I redid all the buttons on it out of buttons that were on the DeLorean, the Back to the Future yeah, DeLorean, yeah, yeah, the yeah, time yeah. machine. Yeah. So some of the buttons that you see, so for instance, if you look at the, the punch-up display buttons, uh -huh. you'll see these things where it's got three LEDs over every button. Right, yeah. It'll yeah, be yeah. green, red, and blue, or yeah. green, red, and yellow. Okay, so what I did is on the, the what should we call it, the, um, the buttons for the cues, mm. they were similar style buttons, but they had the three LEDs right next to the button, so when you push it, it turned green, yellow, yeah, and blue, yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So I had those there, then the, the forward button and back button were something very similar to the thing, right. and I even took the fucking red crimper thing, yeah. you know, the, the label maker yeah, they, yeah, from yeah. the 80s, I yeah. would crimp the labels. And it would say forward, reverse, play, stop, nice, this and that. And nice. I'd put it over the front. And the full top was like, it was aluminum. Uh -huh. So I brushed aluminum and made it look like the stainless yeah, of, the, yeah, of, the, of, the, the of the DeLorean. And then um, I basically cut the top of it open around the jog wheel, yeah. hinged it, and actually reroute all the wires inside so the jog would still work and everything. But when you lift it up, there's a clicker switch to turn on, and the flux capacitor was inside. Oh, so that's actually, so sick. So I actually put a chase unit inside <laughs> that thing so the flux capacitor was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it even said it had the little fucking wires that went over. It says danger, high voltage, stuff like that, all this crazy oh, shit. Man. So nobody knew, it, but it closed, yeah, and you'd yeah. never know it was inside. Yeah, you could yeah, still yeah, scratch yeah. and do stuff with it. But then when you want to do it, you open it up, and then, and then uh, another thing I did is I put the, the exhaust jets or whatever vents on the back. So yeah, that looked like yeah, that. Yeah, and then uh, I put a Mr. Fusion on top. And the Mr. Fusion was actually... Uh, like some duct working? Or? No, no. It was really kind of cool. It was uh, an LED light bulb that you used to put like a GU-10 uh -huh. light bulb. And it was an LED one with those heat sinks uh -huh, that yeah, come around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, just, I took that part apart, pulled this out, did these things. And what I did is the CD thumb drive i kind of covered it up and also the sd card because of the aluminum the way everything worked yeah. so i ended up moving the wires and changed that out and put it on top or the, now yeah. the mr fusion is actually the thumb drive so you <laughs> pull the awesome. cap off yeah. and then it said mr fusion <laughs> on it and you put your thumb drive in That's there amazing. and it would and it would play your th your cd but he lost his goddamn mind when he saw oh that, right? well let's check this out it's not even done yet so the sides i uh had i basically hand cut out acrylic and then took, uh, at the time, this stuff started coming out. It was called EL wire, electroluminescent wire. Uh -huh. So it's like wire that you put a charge to it and it'll glow. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I took that and it was blue. I took that along, along the side, put it along, put it along the side, this and that. Did it all the way around it. And then underneath I put uh, LED strobers. Yeah. So my main goal was I was trying to do, but I wasn't savvy at the time with enough electronics. But I wanted to push a button and I wanted the counter, like a little LED counter. Like in the yeah. movie, yeah, 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 so you go, yeah, yeah. 88, when it hit 88, it, the whole thing would be like flash and weird shit. Yeah, yeah, go okay. to the future. Right? Yeah, 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 but then it would like, we're do it for like, you know, 10 seconds and then stop. Yeah. You can hit the button again, go up. Yeah, yeah. But I could never get that to do, so I just ended up having a switch on it or a button that you push, and the thing would just strobe and yeah, go out. Yeah, yeah. But overall, man, I mean, the thing was just insane. So he had got it, and he was like, yeah. you know, I even took the, um, I took RC car wheels and made them look like the DeLorean yeah, wheels. And yeah, I actually yeah. put them on the bottom as feet. Nice. Uh, for the, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I mean, I really went crazy. It sounds amazing, yeah. Thing. I mean, you can see it. The it's pictures similar, are on the website, right? I'm sure yeah. there's, there's I, I looked online. through those pictures, but there were so many, too. I didn't go through them all. No, even if you just type in art mix, like yeah, yeah. Pioneer art mix, all that yeah, shit yeah, comes yeah. up. So we did that piece, and then they go, that is fucking ridiculous. Can you do a Millennium Falcon? Yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, sure, why not? You know, all right, cool, man. I'll... Shit, why not? You know, so that was just all out of this stuff. I owns corny block foam, and I just sculpted most of it, and then just used shit tons of bondo, and it's kept sanding it. Bondo, That's crazy. Sanded, bondo. It looks really good. Yeah, it took a long time. I mean, at that point, you're basically a sculptor now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and now I'm sitting there going, "How did they do all the crazy, weird finango shit on these things?" Yeah. So I started looking at it and analyzing pictures and analyzing and analyzing and analyzing. Find out 90% of those models were done with electronic components. Mm. So if you look at, like on ours, on the Millennium Falcon, the sides all the way around, it's actually sticks of RAM. Oh, crazy. Okay, because you've got really intricate lines yeah, on it. You've yeah. got all that stuff. So when you have that, 
then you just basically take very thin wire, bend it, bend it like this, and make it look like tubes and run yeah, them around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then you can use little capacitors here, little stack of lines right. here, you know, things to give depth and this that. Once it's all done, set that shit in primer gray. Yeah. That's yeah, pretty yeah. much it. Yeah, yeah, I could see okay, that. Okay, yeah. and once it's done, you get that full 3D depth, everything is yeah. crazy. And then also another thing is is uh we I don't know if you've ever seen them, there's this uh little um Handheld thing, you turn a line on, and it's got all the yeah, fiber, yeah, yeah, the fiber optic, optic wires and this yeah. and that. So we took one of those and ended up pinholing a bunch of spots all over it, and just kind of ran those out and had them hanging out, mm. and shot the whole thing, this and that, put it in there, and then I clipped them. So if you turn the thing on, if you look closely in a bunch of different spots, you see little little dots, yeah, and little lights, and like moving around yeah, and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then of course the back we used a stuff called EL panel, electroluminescent panel. And at the time, you could get it in cool strips. So we made the strip in the back. That um, kind of does like a white blue color, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know, where the jet's yeah, yeah, coming out the, jet, the back. Yeah, the jet stream. So we it. used that. And then a lot of the edges were hand cut. So they were just yeah. just a lot of work, man, put into that. Oh, another crazy thing is the first version, before I changed up the, the dish to the newer version, the satellite dish actually was the bottom of a spray paint can. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's yeah, stuff that yeah. you can find, you know. Yeah, like yeah, for sure. Like, what, you know, what, what fits what, that what, form? Yeah, what, what looks like that, that shape? You know, what scale yeah. to that size? Yeah, you know, yeah. what's what's in this this these general places and it's crazy. And then the um the front cone where the um the cockpit is. Uh, what was that? Um, I think it. I don't know if it was a coke. A piece of a coke bottle yeah i could see that shape that kind of yeah you know something like whatever, that yeah, that yeah. cone shape and stuff like that and then the tube that goes around was actually just cardboard tube you know for like a roll yeah, yeah, of something yeah. that we just cut at an angle and glued it and yeah, yeah ran lines but once you run it the thing looks god awful before yeah. you shoot it with primer right, 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 right. you know but when you basically seal it make sure everything is all clean and this and that and then hit it with primer it's awesome boom now yeah. it's the fucking millennium falcon yeah, you're like yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> So that was that one. And then um, after that, you know, um, they had the second art mix coming up. And so we did the second version. And I did that steampunk player, mm. um, which was the first one that, that I called the polygyrograph. Mm -hmm. right, CD, right? So it had moving gears on the sides with like little rams and pistons that would move around on the mm -hmm. side. Um, it was all wood and brass and copper. And yeah. All that stuff's got like lit up uh, you know um, 12 AX7 tubes in the back mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. all this stuff and what was cool about it it's like okay again if we're doing this for an art piece I gotta make it play I can actually yeah. make it play so I opened it up I actually took speakers and actually put it in the CD player so there's little speakers and during the show um, I thought we were gonna be the only steampunk one there yeah. but there was another guy these dudes that do a cars and stuff yeah, they, made, yeah. they made that crazy scorpion one I don't know if you've seen that one uh -uh, it looks like a one. scorpion that moves up and down oh, yeah I have seen it's it it's kind of crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. man I was almost jealous the little like hydraulic stuff I was almost jealous <laughs> don't get me wrong the guys did a fucking amazing job on it I'm like oh but I'll tell you what it was they had better tools yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a, okay, they had a machine shop, man. Yeah. I, I didn't have a machine shop. Yeah. This is all hand cut and right, right, right. You know everything I possibly could to you know make it, but it worked. It yeah, worked. Yeah, you know, yeah. seller is way more compact. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, that went down. But when I built that piece, Davies just said, "Goes, hey man, um, Twelfth Planet wants to be a CDJ. Can you basically build them a CDJ? They'll give you all the specs, yeah. but can you do a form?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure." So we did one for 12th Planet. And we're going to think, hey man, rooks.com, they kind of want one done. It's just they more like a skin system. Or yeah, whatever. yeah. Like, cool, yeah. all right. Uh, hey man, uh, uh, Morgan Thomas wants one done too. Uh, okay, cool, dude. So I did that one. Hey man, uh, you know, so we end up doing close to, I think, 11 CDJs for the second art mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, just to help the guys out and also to make the show crazy, yeah. you know? And I was kind of blown away by, like, just, like, we did a lot of work. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, how many hours do you put in on one of those things? But the, after this time, but this was after I actually left. I left Guitar Center too. Right. Long, so I basically took a, a, you know, faith walk or a leap of faith, whatever you want to call it. Going, you know what? I'm just going to try to, if I can't make it, I'll just go get another job. But yeah, I'm at yeah, least yeah. going to try to make this full time yeah. and just... 
smash what I can because the custom jobs are just coming in after one after another. It's a hell of a lot of hours, right? You know so, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of work. But I mean, I was just doing it because I loved it. Yeah, know? yeah. And then um, shortly after all that crazy stuff done, then we started doing um, in 2015. Um, we actually did a lot of the NAM booth for Pioneer. Like mm. we actually did all the comp- like the layout and right yeah, yeah. The, the, the massive booth and the backdrop yeah, and the yeah, lighting a lot of that stuff you know the guys did all the actual lightings and stuff but we did all the mm. cosmetics like made the walls look like they were concrete stuff like that yeah. and yeah. I kind of bit off way more than I could chew that was the first time I ever did that mm. and I will just I probably won't ever do that again <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but during that time they also wanted the Ghostbusters Proton Pack Okay, so now we do the CEJ Ghostbusters Proton Pack. And of course, <laughs> me being extremely overzealous on making it as awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Matter of fact, I'm trying to make it better than the movie. Yeah. As yeah, if yeah, it yeah. was real. Yeah. Because yeah. I started looking back at the movie and I noticed things that were just, right. you know, it was a movie prop. You noticed some obvious little. Yeah, but otherwise, they did a fantastic job on the movie. I'm not yeah, stating yeah, that yeah, at yeah. all. I mean, it was all, you know, if you grew up in the 80s, 90s, man, it was an iconic yeah, of part of your yeah, yeah, yeah. your youth. Everybody wanted to be Peter Bankman <laughs> or fucking Egon, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, Eric, we actually, I actually looked at it. I'm like, okay, they're using a military backpack frame. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I did that. We found the actual military style backpack frame yeah. with the green straps. Right, 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 right. Identical right. from the movie. I found that. And then we're like, okay, we started measuring everything out. And actually, I found out actually how tall Bill Murray was. <laughs> like, okay, I mean, this is how depth we went with this. Was, there, was this on the Wikipedia at that time even? Like, oh, sorry, just go no, no, I mean, it's basically how like, tall you know, tall I mean, is. How do you like, figure him out? Oh, Bill Murray. I mean, if you look at Bill Murray when he goes through the door, more stores. Oh, yeah, that's right. there it is, right? You just need a okay, door so, to walk through a door and you okay, basically yeah, got you it, can right? schedule, you can basically scale him within a few inches. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So you can basically get that and then you look at it, how big it is in proportion to him and you can go, all right, it's exactly 28 inches from here and you can say, yeah, this is it. yeah. You can say, basically, this is how wide it is. This is what? Okay, I mean, I'm <laughs> fucking retarded when it comes to this shit, all right? Because I want it as authentic as I possibly can. Yeah. All right, um, so we did that. And of course, we made it a little bit our own when yeah. I built this thing. Like, so for instance, um, the side box on the top, there's actually a VU meter that moves up and mm, down. So mm. when you hit play, instead of there's a thing called Zzz and blink. Yeah, it, that's cooler. Yeah. It's actually kind of a VU yeah, meter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that which we call it. Um, I think it's a reset button and another button is off of that thing as right. well that controls that down yeah. the side. Because we didn't use any of the CDJ except for the display. And I think some of the chassis we did use. Yeah. But not much. I yeah, mean, we're just scrapping and scrapping the that, body, basically. It, yeah, a lot of it. The backing or the, the part that held the seat, the, the, the drive, yeah, we used that. That went inside. Yeah, so that back kind of, I guess the boards all come off of that. Is that how that works? Yeah, so oh, most mixers, it seems like that's how it works, basically. Yeah, yeah. So what we did is we took a five gallon bucket and we basically <laughs> cut that down and made the hole, and that's basically the round part. Right, right, right. Okay, so we made that, made the jog wheel fit into that, did some work around that, made sure all that was to scale, rounded all the edges so it looked exactly yeah. to that scale we built the part came out there's a place down in uh, Burbank area it's called Apex Apex Electronics and basically it's a recycled place that recycles electronics and also airplane parts <laughs> yeah okay so this place you can get really cool aeronautic plugs yeah yeah you know, those yeah, really yeah, cool yeah. ones those really cool uh, yeah, yeah little, the aluminum kind of, ones yeah, that yeah. are just like you know military grade yeah. aircraft grade shit so you can find all these really interesting pieces so you got an apex you're like okay that's it that's it that's it that's yeah. it you're like you but this place is not just drawers and stuff it is pack you actually have to sift yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Anything, Bins right? and, yeah so anyway, we ended up finding all these different plugs and all these different things to try to make sure the so the handle was right the leds were right everything was correct all this stuff was done all the tubing pieces were correct um yeah we found all these different things the little wire that actually leads up from the front that kind of curves around yeah, the front yeah, right there, sure that's mind. actually a projector wire. If you look at the movie itself, you can see like a rubber grommet with a wire mm-hmm. coming out of it. 
that's actually for a movie projector uh-huh. for the high voltage yeah, 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 projectors. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, yeah, what the, yeah, the, the yeah, silicone yeah. or the rubber is for is the insulator <laughs> for the high <laughs> power, high conductor wire. So we found that, found all these things and we just did the best we could with that thing. So we were doing that while we were building the booth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then they're like, Oh, we need another CDJ. Um, so we were also building another one, which was the Knight Rider. And it was <laughs> actually the full CDJ that looks just like the fucking Knight Rider car. So instead of having to display in the middle, we have a view meter that does Kit's voice box. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so when you play in your CD, it does this. Yeah, It fucking yeah, moves yeah, around yeah. like Voices Kit box. Sick. Um, or Kit's voice yeah, box. Yeah, voice box, yeah. Um, and then there, we did the same thing where I took the wheels, put them underneath it. Um, redid the top so it was basically black with a thin white stripes mm. down at the bottom it says oil and it's got this yeah, and yeah. then we found so close to the original buttons yeah, all yeah, the yeah. way through it so then you know it says oil uh um, yeah, turbo says, yeah, 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 uh, other things like that you know for the, the different or yeah. you know turbo turbo boost jump whatever so i was looking at online trying to find all the different captions yeah. i could find with it and yeah, man, I think came out super rad. We even formed the front to come down like this, so it looked like, like the front end. Yeah, like the front end. Yeah, we yeah, formed yeah. that, and then in the front's got the bouncing light goes. <laughs> <in the front. laughs> so sick. So yeah, that came out pretty dope. And on the back, this is night one, you know, yeah. or night, you know, yeah. like a little license plate on the back. Um, so we did that, and then we also did the RC CDJ, which was actually we took a one. Uh, a one eighth scale, one sixth scale RC car, cut it down wise, and actually welded it, put it together to now fit a CDJ on top of it. So it's an actual RC yeah, all wheel yeah, drive yeah, yeah. CDJ. <laughs> um, did that, and that was all in 2015 where we were doing that booth. Okay. So stress let be, whatever. That was the most chaotic time I think I've, I've ever been in. But at the damn show that year, we actually had. Um, was it Ray Parker Jr.? The guy, I ain't afraid of no ghost. The mm-hmm. actual guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was there. He saw the proton pack there and he was completely blown away. He was like, like, this is Ray Parker Jr. Yeah. All right? I mean, the guy that, you know, he's Mr. Ghostbuster, yeah. you know, and he was sitting there and he ended up wearing the backpack and walking around with it at the booth. And it's still all placed too. Like on the gun part, you have the power button click and you turn it on and the fucking CDJ turns on right? <laughs> you have the play button the key button the fast forward and this uh, and that all so on sick. the gun right <laughs> you know the actual thing yeah, yeah. and uh yeah it was nuts and he was just going hey I'm even Cuber came over and was taking photos with them and it was really cool to see that all oh, hard work was just so appreciated yeah and people light up but, you know and yeah. it was still again like we didn't really get much recognition for it and that's fine that's fine like I I'm not about that yeah. I really meant, you know, I hope people don't ever think that, you know, it's just, I just like making cool shit, you know, and if, and if somebody enjoys that, that's the reward, yeah, you know, and yeah. of course, you know, a, a small little paycheck with it is always a plus, you know, <laughs> to keep you going, yeah. just to make sure we pay our bills so I can keep making shit. Cause if I'm broke, I'm stuck. Yeah. You know? yeah it's just like anybody else, you know? Yeah. So I've been very fortunate with that. So anyway, all aside, I know we just spent like an hour just like talking about <laughs> me um, but as for when it comes to the portable stuff, it kind of started with a couple of friends of mine in the LA area, um, actually out of Simi Valley, they sit there and they go, Hey man, we're basically putting faders on these portable turntables, these Vestix handy tracks and we're yeah. scratching on them and DJing with them. Like the fucking frisk go, fader. Yeah. I go, that's the stupidest thing I think I've ever heard. <laughs> I'll be the first to admit it, man. I go, this is dumb. Why don't you use turntables? So right there, you got a pair of turntables. <laughs> like, no, man, this is this is so cool, man. Yeah. It's like a toy, but it's rad and it works. I'm like, okay. They're like, well, we have these faders, but they just don't work very well. And this and that. Can you make one? Can you make a fader? I'm like, all right, I'll try. Yeah. So I did. Um, at that time, I was toying with actually making my own circuit boards where you make a stencil. Uh, we were taking basically making our own stencils, putting them on raw circuit boards. Yeah, you know, where it's copper yeah, yeah, yeah. Put in a ferric, cl- put in a ferric chloride, let it etch away. Let yeah. the oxide copper coming up, clean it up. Bam. Yeah. Got our own circuit boards. Sweet, right? So I'm like, all right, cool. So I basically made a, found a, a dual rail, you know, fader yeah, with whatever yeah. parts that I needed on it, and 
kind of measured it all out and did this, did that, and I made the stripes where I needed them to go, and I did my stuff, basically made some faders. Things worked really good. They popped like hell, the first yeah. ones did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um, these were grinding the prototypes, did some stuff, helped it out, and they worked though. They worked actually really well. Yeah. So I gave them to them, and they just tried them out, and they're like, these things are great. They're so much better than these other ones. And uh, at the time I gave them to him, I ended up running into the guy named Van, which is the dude that runs Raiden Fader. Mm-hmm. And nice guy, totally rad. And he kind of goes, hey, man, are, are you going to be coming out with these? Because I saw him. And I'm like, I don't think so. Honestly, no. And he's mm-hmm. like, cool, because we just started a production run. Mm-hmm. We're just getting them in. I'm like, dude, make your money, please. Yeah, I mean, yeah. by all means, you know, I'm I'm all for that, you know. Make your cash, dude. You know, because I really, I didn't think anything of it. I mean, at the time. So, six months go by, and I started getting calls, started getting emails. People are like, bro, I saw Phil's fader, man. When are you going to come out with these? Are you going to be coming out with these, yeah, man? I yeah. really want one. I'm like, nah, I don't know yet. I, I don't know. And then start more fucking things coming. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, man, I don't think so. And then people are coming in and basically saying it was the first version Raiden. And they were just saying, man, this thing just, it works for a while. Then it just completely goes out on me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, hopefully, you know, maybe I'll change the design, you know. Mm-hmm. But at the time, I don't know if he was going to or what he was doing or if it was even going to go anywhere. Yeah, I had yeah. no idea what was going on. And finally, people are just like, dude, we need this fader. I'm like, all right, cool. So I started redesigning it. And I'm just trying to basically make a passive dual yeah. rail conductive fader. You yeah. know, it's just whatever. So we did just version after version after version of version until we got it right where we wanted it to be. And then mm. we had boards printed up and started giving the people to try and started sending them out. And oh, people started buying them. Yeah. yeah. And that kind of took it off. And then um, at that time, uh, right before that, in 2015, um, I got a call from Mike Mikhail Beers of Tomorrowland. Yeah. And he says, he goes, hey, man, I would like you to do our main stage gear for Tomorrowland 2015. And I'm all, what's Tomorrowland? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know what it was, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> so I Google that, and I go, damn, a lot okay, of <laughs> what guys, what somebody wants us to do? So they wanted some steampunk stuff done, because they saw that polygyrograph that we yeah. did for the art mix prior. They wanted something similar to that, but yeah. they wanted eight CDJs. They yeah, wanted yeah, two yeah. 900s. They wanted two RMX 1000s. Yeah. They even wanted two RMX 2000s. <clears throat> so I, that's a lot of fucking gear, bro. And you want this win by July? Yeah. Well, okay, you better get it to us quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. So they got us the gear, man. We just blazed through, did the best we possibly can. And I told them, it's like, look, you guys, I mean, it's good. It's awesome. But it could be better. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is all kind of funky. I need you to fly me out if this is going to happen because I want to make sure that everything's taken care of on yeah. site. Yeah. If there's any problematic issues, it can be solved. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. No problem. Totally, totally honorable. You know? Yeah. So I ended up going out to uh, Tomorrowland in 2015, did the whole show. Nothing failed. It was awesome. Um, got some great clubs. And we're still getting hits to this day of like, yeah. who did the gear tomorrow? Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. people are still doing this, you know, and it's like, we didn't get a whole lot of press from it. And, right. But that's fine. Like I said before, yeah. it, it was just, wow, what an experience. But that was my first time ever out of the U.S. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So um, that November in 2015, I'd go to the Philippines right after that. And then uh, March of 16, um, Right after we started doing these faders, I ended up going to Japan, meeting up with uh, the guys at Tokyo. Plus, yeah. I've never been to Japan. Yeah, I'm like, no, Japan's once so you pop your cherry and leaving the country, dude, uh, you, Japan. Kinda, you, you, you can't stop. No, yeah. So I went to Japan and this and that, and then was got, that 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 was was it later that they did the Five Fingers of Death thing? With, when, oh, that was yeah, that was that was, that was two years ago. Yeah, seven, yeah, was, yeah. Sorry, sorry. So sixteen, you know, I went over there, and that's when we first started going with fader. So we ended up getting the fader to Tokyo to Shin to mm-hmm. the people in Japan. Yeah. And they started using it, and then started making orders, and then I started going over here, and then, but before that, a little before that, um, Richie Roughtone hit me up and goes, "Hey, man, I see the fader is pretty cool." And I'm like, yeah, no problem. So I made him a custom with his rough tone on yeah. it. And then I shipped it over here and he got to play with it. And I sent one to Woody. I sent one 
to all these different people in my tier just, and just try them. Yeah. If you like them, great. If you don't, no worries, yeah. dude. And everybody, most of the people were just like, these things are great. So, um, turntable training wax, you know, with Richie, they decided to go ahead and pick them up and start selling them. And it's kind of where it all started, man. Yeah. And that's how it all got over here to the UK and all this other crazy stuff. And yeah. yeah. Just how it was just kind of going and people just start buying these things. And when they did that, I'm like, okay, let's make the next thing. You know, we yeah. haven't funded, you know, the, 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 yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the scene is funding us yeah, totally. to build more stuff. And I'm like, how cool is this? Yeah, yeah. You know, now we get to do more. And at this time, I only had one dude working for worth with yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe one and a half. The other dude was basically a guitar uh-huh. tech. Yeah. No, he was a guitar tech that worked at the shop. We didn't help us in whatever we needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Steve, super cool cat. OG. You know, at <laughs> any rate, um... It, yeah, it was kind of crazy, man. It was just, uh, it just kind of took off. Yeah. I wasn't expecting it. Yeah, I don't think I was just trying to help some friends out and make a favorite. Yeah. And it turned into. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember seeing the first. Portland Lounge, 2000, you know, Beat Geek to Portland Lounge, 2019. Yeah, it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. Man, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, I remember seeing the Frisk Fader and it was on yeah, a like, Japanese site that you couldn't really yeah, like, it was like, navigate I, and well. They were like using it on an iPod. And like, yep, yep. And I, I, I ordered one for my buddy for his birthday and for myself one as well. Yeah, and as like a key a, chain. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and uh, I guess that was 2014-ish or something. And it, yeah, you know, and then, and, and, uh, and then my buddy in Berlin, this guy, um, he went by the name Wax Inspector. Yeah. He was. He makes a dope fader, by the way. I've got three of them and my portable's going in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's so, totally, Wax Inspector is dope. I actually got to meet him in Berlin. I was yeah, so yeah, yeah. happy to meet him. Yeah, he was pumped to meet you too. He yeah. was telling me all about it. Oh, I was so yeah, He's a really good friend, like a, a really close oh, friend of mine. He's, he's G, man. I like, I, mean, it, he I was, remember when he first came out with his fader and we work, like I said, but then it's like, then it comes to like competition. It's like okay, what's next? So oh, he like, didn't want to do. It. He didn't want to sell it. That was that was his. I kept telling him like, you know, this is tw- again twenty fifteen ish. I'm like, man, you got to sell these things. And he's like, I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> he was like, I just don't want to deal with it like nah, at all. Blame, no, I don't blame him. There was a point where he wouldn't make them for friends or anybody, and I already had one. So I was there were a lot of work to make because you have yeah. to like, align those read switches. Yeah, just yeah. right. And when D Styles D Styles came to Berlin in twenty sixteen, I guess it was. Yeah. And I showed D mine. And then, and he was like, dude, I want one of these so bad. And on mine, he had made me like a headphone switch and little trim, like little beat trim. Yeah. And, and so, and D was like, oh my God, I want one. And, uh, and so I wrote him like, hey, I know you're so against making them, but D just asked me for four of them. Yeah. And he was like, uh, I think, yeah, of- put me in touch. <laughs> that was, I think that was 2015. So that was, I think this might've been the last ones he ever made. He's, he's still, he, he's always tinkering, you know, he makes yeah. little speakers and little fun things. Yeah. And- yeah Cause so when we met up in Berlin, <laughs> Uh, he used to say when we were discussing how to get, like, how to, because he can only do it in mono. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, so yeah. we were working on a dual read switch thing, and we were discussing yeah. it, so we drove some schematics. I don't know if it went anywhere. No, I mean, he never, he he's, he's had he had a kid about like, two years ago, and it's, he's just busy. He's yeah, always working. And... I mean, there's a great concept for passive, because I love passive stuff where you don't yeah, need any yeah, power. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that was the best way to do it. But, yeah, we were going back and forth, like, different types of ways to to ground to basically to mute it you'd ground it right you know right, what i'm saying right. the, the stereo signal so you can still run stereo and we're going mm, all over mm. the stuff and trying to figure out what saying. yeah about. man that's tony he's my boy that's yeah, yeah. That's, that's cool he was yeah he i mean he's helped me with so many like so my my portable i bought i had an older a pto one touring that i ripped up rat ripped out and rebuilt a bit so it was stable and like I used Legos and Lego wheels to make platter stabilizers yeah. and stuff. But he, when I, I I was going to Asia this winter and I bought a, a PTO one and I had like a week to leave and I didn't have anything for it. You know, yeah. he was like, send it to mine. I'll throw a fader in there for you. I'll do a start stop switch for you. You know, he, he did it all for me, like just for free right before I left. Just, I love him. Man. But yeah, he's, he's definitely like, no, I was always like, you should commercialize this. This is way before I even saw your name. And he was like, super cool cat. Though. I don't want to deal with that shit at all. And, he, and the thing that bugged him the most, I remember was getting the bot, doing the body. Yeah, he was like, he was like, I can't find a suitable case. So actually, the first one I had is one of his first edition ones, and it was it's an ADAT tape yep, case. Yep, I remember. That. <laughs> I've seen those, yeah. That's the first one I had. But yeah, yeah. But see, he was totally not into dealing with the the orders. He was like annoyed when someone a friend would ask him to make one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it was really cool, man, to meet up with him and just a whole tour through seventeen was awesome. Yeah, you know, and like I said, the faders basically. My whole vision with the the vision was with the. 
the portableist tour, you know, portable world tour and the scratch break thing was, you know, with, with Freddie was to basically document the portable scene as yeah. growing. Yeah, yeah. Because the problem was, is if you, during, during the nineties, the only thing you ever see from anything scratching was people that had VHS yep. recorded yeah, and yeah. not everybody had one. No, no, no. Nobody had camcorders no, 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 or even yeah. the people willing enough to take the time to edit it. Yeah. yeah, yeah or yeah, even yeah. to do that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Or you only things you see was DMC VHSs. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. know, so that was basically all you ever saw. So I mean there's good guys who could have came out with scratches that wouldn't have been nobody would ever know yep. it was them. Totally. Man. Or there was people, you know, or watched the actual growth of it. Granted we live in a time now where everything is, you know, at your fingertips. Yeah, HD, you know, cameras and, in your pocket. And not just that you really can't sometimes trust what you see. Yeah. yeah. But um, we've been, uh, that was my main vision was that to show the culture and show the people and show the just how a little turntable can bring so many people together. Yeah. You know, in the parks. And then you're not just at a club. You're yeah, not just man. At a place. It's definitely a, re- a huge resurgence. And, and I noticed that the last year traveling around Asia and Europe, like, there's a lot of guys too that used to scratch, you know, and didn't for ten years. Yes. And they're like, Oh, I'm just cutting again because my buddy showed me his portable. Now I've got one and like yeah. there's a ton of that going on. Yeah, because like, I noticed there was like you said, a a lot of people not not just my age, but maybe a little bit older. Yep. They yeah. sit there and they go, Man, I was in high school, I used to DJ, I used to scratch. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I used to watch the visible scratch pickles or I used to watch you know, if you're over in the UK, it's like, man, I used to watch uh, what you call them? flies to watch you know yeah, all these yeah, different yeah. cats tony T- or tony vegas and yeah, yeah, yeah. all these guys scratch and perverts and, and stuff, yeah, yeah all that stuff you know and and uh their thing was it's like either i got married yeah just my life. wife didn't want to do life. it i yeah. had to get a full-time job i had yeah. to grow up yeah, yeah, yeah you know and and stuff I had like four that. kids or whatever. So yeah, i had to sell my turntables off yeah. i had to do this and that and then they see the little portable thing and they're like like I can do that in my garage. I can go to my yeah. man cave. It ain't that yeah, much yeah. money. My wife ain't going to piss me. So no, a couple no, hundred bucks on it. No, no. You know, and uh, I noticed a lot of that. Yeah, man. It's everywhere. Yeah. It, everywhere I was, like, I constantly came across dudes that were like, you know, I used to cut the 90s. Yep. Or the late 80s, but, and I'm back at it now. Yeah, yeah that's constant. Exactly. And, and, and what was so dope about it, it's just, it's just cool to see all this. Plus, you know, the, it's feeding it's actually feeding artists right now because if you notice how many seven inch records are out now it's unreal no it did yeah like just at nam show like this year 2018 the nam show we released a poster and at 160 62 oh, yeah i saw that poster seven inch records but granted that wasn't all the ones that no, was no, just no, 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 most yeah. of my collection because yeah, 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 i yeah. started collecting them as soon as i could yeah yeah because yeah. i just i like collecting records i also collect yeah, serato records too yeah. you know so i have did you get those lot. American flag ones that were there this weekend? Oh, I went where? Apparently, they had American flag ones at the vendor down at the end this weekend. And those guys have a shop here in London, by the way. Oh, Scratch Pro Audio? Oh, yeah, yeah I guess it's those guys. Somebody, oh, somebody just told that. me that. I didn't see it. Were but they, was like, were they a new release one? Uh huh. Bozzi was like, did you grab the American flags? And I was like, what? And he was well, like, down I mean, there. It's kind of crazy with the Serato ones now. It's like, well, when they first started doing the collector's ones, well, nobody was really collecting them. Yeah, it wasn't eggs, yeah, but like, yeah. I think Stokio kind of fired it off, yeah. like by doing like the Shibuya breaks, doing yeah, the King yeah, breaks, yeah. doing all those limited pressings. Yeah. And then they started with like the Diplos and all these yeah. really weird albums, and people were picking them up because they had music on one side right, and then they yeah, had yeah. scratch on the other, you know. And it was just a, it was a huge concept that was brilliant. I fell in love with it, and plus there were a lot of art on there. It was bitching, mm. you know. So I started collecting those things, and then I started going back and picking out old Rain records. I started pulling out whatever I could find then, yeah, yeah. you know. So once that started, and then it kind of started a whole movement with Serato Collector Records. Well, now Serato now, you know, bless them and all, but it's kind of just, it's not what it used to be. They're just Serato Records. Yeah. yeah. There's just time code records. There's no there's no music on the yeah, right yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. And whatever artists they usually pick up, I've never heard of them. Yeah, that a lot seems of cases, like the art bastard is very minimally applied, if it makes sense. I don't know if it's... Yeah, I don't know if it's me or... I don't yeah, know, yeah, yeah, old. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so I kind of stopped collecting those things. Um, but, yeah, the 7-inch ones are really cool. And plus, you know, with our online store that we have, I thought it was just a really cool thing to basically 
time somebody comes out with one, try to get at least 20 to 30 of yeah, them, yeah, stock yeah. them, and if people want to buy them, they, can, they have a place to get them. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there's not a place to get them. Maybe, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of now turned into, like, now we need a collection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's <laughs> like, uh, I think now we're up to since eight, since the beginning or when we did that poster, I think I've got at least another 40 records. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know crazy. what I'm saying? So it's insane. Like I have crates of all these records. Yeah, man. And, yeah, it is insane. So, but that's cool because it's now feeding artists that way. Totally. And then, you know, you've got, you know, we make the little fader, but then there's other people that make faders like CJ Scratch. Yeah. Like that yeah, one, yeah, yeah. One, one, two, four. Yeah. You know, I remember that guy, he was hitting me up. He's going, man, I love what you're doing. Thank you so much. I want to make my own thing. Like, do it, dude. Yeah, 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 you know. And then I remember he had a thing, a fundraiser on like Kickstarter, or GoFundMe or something, yeah. or whatever, and started off. I sent him hundred bucks. I'm like, bro, yeah, 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 go for it, man. Please, by all means, it's your idea. That's original. I that's the mm -hmm. putting that little itty bitty thing in a turntable is your idea. Mm -hmm. Please, by all means, man, knock it. You know, it's just me. I'm not a big fan of thieves. Yeah, you know? yeah, you know, and. Yeah, I've seen some stuff out there. It's just like, all right, guys, I get it. But I don't know. Like, people have been asking me to not make a, a platter. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm like, I don't want to. Yeah. You already yeah, got yeah, solid yeah, cuts yeah. out there. You got Infinity. Yeah, you know, I yeah. don't know Brandon. He's the greatest guy in the world. Yeah. I mean, talked online briefly to think it's, uh, it's, I forgot his name, but a different guy from Solid Cuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicest dudes in the world, but I, you know, they're making a living at this. Yeah, why yeah, would yeah. I want to have friends on that? Yeah, 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 of course. That's yeah. just that's more work on my plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm already pretty yeah. stacked the way it is. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just realized, yeah. but yeah, we've got some new products coming out the photons and process. Yeah, uh, that will be released very, 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 very soon. What? Please, that's you and Hard Rich working on that one together. Yeah, Hard right? Rich yeah. and also Thud Rumble. So we have yeah, that, plus, yeah. we got many of other beta people involved with it, testing it and checking stuff. And yeah. Which is awesome, um, but there's been a lot of revisions, a lot of changes. Also, people helping with it. It's either been out on tour because it yeah. was just the way the timing worked. Right. So they weren't exactly available. Yeah, yeah. I, actually, I hung out with them when they came through uh, oh, Leipzig. Sid? Yeah, Sid, Sid, Sid and, and Hardrich. And Hardrich and some of the guys from yeah, the band. Super rad, Went man. and sat in the park and had a cut and smoke <laughs> and stuff and hung out <laughs> for the day. Yeah, it was. I just saw, he, I saw Rich post like a picture of something in Austria, and I was like, what the hell are you doing in Europe? I didn't realize they were, they were on tour with uh, with them with uh, what do you call it Slipknot, Slipknot. Yeah. and uh, and he was like actually we got a free day in Leipzig tomorrow and I was gonna be driving from Berlin to Prague so I was like that's a thirty minute detour and he was yeah. like man you know where to get anything to smoke <laughs> I was like yeah man I got you so I drove over there and met up with everybody and we went and hung out all day and laid around and shit but yeah no but yeah they've been on tour so it's like yeah you know tour life is not easy no so you know so things have been kind of on hold and I appreciate everybody who did the pre order yeah. Um, you know, and this letter, it, it is done. The majority of it is 90, 90 yeah, 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 yeah. It's just, we had to make sure certain things were legit. Cause I don't want to put anything out there that's going to have issues. Yeah, of course. Cause otherwise, yeah, fine. We get it out, but then we end up getting it back. Uh, yeah, What's but, the point but, of that? I, I mean, want it to go out and I stay I feel out. bad for phase guys having to deal with all that yeah, stuff with the batteries. And, 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 and I get it, you know, but Absolutely. what's cool though is what's really neat about what we're doing is that we do every. All of it in our shop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's nothing. So if so. something is not right, we can find it and correct it. Yeah, yeah or yeah, catch yeah. it. You know, immediately. I was wondering um, about like because I remember when when Newmark put out the the PTO one scratch. Yeah. I was like, oh, dope! They're gonna have a fader, and there was a switch, and I was like, what were they thinking? Like cheap. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, is, is it less... that much cheaper? Well, also for one, it's yeah, it's a lot. Cheaper. It is a lot cheaper. I was just—I just remember seeing but it, being like, "I, I can't believe they did that." Know. And then I remember thinking that Jesse Dean dude is gonna be fucking happy. And, and I was always joking. Seriously, we 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 were trying to get the uh, the new mark, the scratch, right when it came out, but they were impossible to find. Yeah, at yeah, first, yeah. I mean, they were just nobody had them. You couldn't find them. We didn't have any really good ties with Newmark at the time, you know. And then um, the scratch. Then I finally got one. As soon as I got one, man, I didn't even play with it. I opened it up. That was the first thing I did. We found this fucking thing. So I took original fader that I had and just soldered points yeah. to it to make sure that the the theory works. It worked, yeah. And then we had uh, a couple little tuning things with it. And I don't know if you know Flesh One. It was John with Flesh yep. One. He, he's, he's, 
one of the most down to earth people. He lives up in the Bay. He has that web, web website, Beat Shelter. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were actually working on the wax cutter stuff. Actually, yeah. at the time, we were trying to come up with uh, making a little scratch for the PTO One Scratch. Yeah. A little fader that used the reed switches. And I guess he got the okay from from wax. Or, yeah, or, you yeah, know, from yeah, Tony. Yeah. That it was okay to go ahead and make them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were tinkering with that. I told Flash, I'm like, dude, I'll be glad to help you make all this stuff. It's not a problem. We'll do some testing and some tuning and stuff for you and maybe make the boards and everything for you so right. it's easy on your production side. And we were just trying to make all that stuff work. And I go, hey, man, I got this version. Can you help me with it? He's all, oh, hell yeah. So I sent up a board because we were getting some mild clicks out of it. Yeah. And he's like, oh, dude, I, no problem, dude. So he brought it up there, and he's like, yeah, we got right here and right here. It's basically, you got to snip that cap to make it really, really sharp. Right. And this is the cap you put in this spot. Yeah, and I remember granted, this initial idea. Yeah, granted, yeah. I was really green with a lot of this stuff at the time, you know, with the actual electronic charts. Like I said, I have a really mechanical yeah. background. Yeah. You can build anything you want. Yeah. When it comes to electronics, I was learning a lot. Right, Really yeah, yeah, fast. Yeah. Learning as you go, yeah. You know? So, um, so yeah, it kind of just took off from there. Did that, so I just did a production thing, got some metal stamps, got some stuff done, mm. and paid for it. You know, like I said, paid for it all ourselves. We yeah. Didn't, we didn't kickstart it or anything no, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And no joke, but I think we were the first ones to come out for anything for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also just, that's I mean, the floodgates everywhere I was, that was like the must-haves. Everybody was like, oh, like, I just bought one, and my, my Jesse Dean's on the way. You know? <laughs> it was literally, like, know, everywhere it's I went. So, it's so In weird. In Europe, America. I know, but it's, it's so weird, dude, to see all these little parts that we make in our shop all over the place. So when yeah. we come here, it's like... Yeah, 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 you look over, and there's one like, there, and you're like... Oh, it's yeah. kind of surreal, man. Yeah, for and, sure. You know, and then all these people coming up going, man... Dude, you changed the game. You made everything this, and I'm all. It's just weird. I, yeah. I don't know how to take you. you know? <laughs> yeah. I just do. I just do what I do. You know, just and I. Just, my main thing is, is as long as you're out there scratching, man. As long as you're out there having fun doing this stuff, that's all that matters. You know? I can't remember who it was. Somebody recently who won it. Uh, oh, I know who it was. It was Dejaculate, the DJ from <laughs> from, uh, from the UK. He won the the Clash of the Titans scratch battle. Yeah, and he yeah. got he got a PTO one as like one of the prizes. And he was like, he goes, he uh, er, and he was our second place this year. But he he was like, I was like, so what'd you get? You know, joking. And he was like, got myself a Jesse Dean money making machine. That's what he called it. And uh, he was like, I don't know. I was like, that's hilarious. You know, that, that's such a good way to call it. He's like. He's like, yeah, but that boy loves Newmark. <laughs> yeah. No, man, we're not actually. No, Newmark, we've we've done a lot of stuff with, with them. Now, yeah. But uh, nothing's really moved forward. I mean, I'd love to do like a special edition with yeah, them or help them yeah. develop something. Yeah, that is, yeah. Haven't heard anything, and then of course, mm. you know, Reloop. They reached out to yeah, us. Yeah, it seemed like you guys had a real close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. And uh, basically, at the first, at the first beat, uh, portable slams, we got yeah. to meet up with uh, Gerald. Um, which is one of the yeah see the you. guru guys, yeah. you know, and they're like, yeah, man, we want to make a portable. Don't say anything. Yeah, 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 and I'm like, hey, man, if you need any help, by all means, man, I'm here because yeah, my f- I don't have any exclusives or any contracts yeah, yeah, with anybody. Yeah, me, <laughs> you know, I mean, I have non disclosures, but those are pending on pro- on certain yeah, projects, right, right. and I won't like I said, it's one of those things with a non disclosure. You can't really be in multiple projects. Yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. Yeah multiple disclosures yeah, yeah, yeah. if you're working on kind of the same thing yeah. so i make sure that a product's released before i could drop into another project yeah yeah, yeah. um because then anybody can open it up yeah. and look at themselves yeah, yeah, you know yeah. so it's kind of declassified if you will yeah totally. um but yeah it was like nothing was going on i mean i was trying to get somebody to bite nobody did mm-hmm. i'm like okay well i mean all right sweet so we ended up uh, working with reloop which was awesome um, we did some, basically some changes to schematic works, add mm-hmm. some stuff in there that would make modding a bit more easy. Um, so we didn't have to do a lot of tapping into certain yeah, yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus they used a way more complex circuitry system. I oh, mean, yeah. their circuitry system is way more complex than any mark. Uh-huh. Yeah. They got that Bluetooth receiver. Yeah, in there. So the... the motor driver's digital. Mm-hmm. I mean, they got a lot of really crazy nonsense inside that shit. I wonder, so. what, do you know why, or what happened about using, like, the form factor of the Vestix kind of handy tricks? I, I, I know a lot I, of people were, like, kind of surprised, like, you know, people that don't really know um, anything as about As far as I know, what it was is the manufacturers that made 
still had the t- the dies it's or something. The, they so had a lot of the tooling. That's what I was thinking. That's what I, that's what it's I the same. It's the same. It's the same company, but I don't know how the tooling actually thinks. I think the only thing that's the same is just the lid. The, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Tone arm. Yeah, because the, the body's not the same, right? Because no, it I looks similar, but it's not. No, the, no, the base is wider not, and everything, it, right? No, like, it's the same shape. Yeah, but the platter's been moved in. The tone arms move over here, so the top plate's completely different. Yeah, or the ch- top chassis, the bottom's completely different because because I matched the bottom. You know, yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything. I mean, it, it is. It's another similar it's, form factor, I guess, but yeah, really, but, not but I think it's same. just that maybe a lot of people like the handy track. Yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. couldn't tell you, man. I don't know why they went with that. I mean, it's not um, like a bad thing necessarily, but I remember pe- being kind of surprised in a way yeah, that when yeah, I saw a lot like, people were like, wait a minute, those are handy tracks. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. What do they do? Find a warehouse full of handy tracks yeah, and read them. But see, also when they had talked to me and stuff, they were, I, you know, they, I was late into the game with their product. You know, yeah, they already had yeah, the yeah. designer do rock. Yeah, yeah, right, had a right, bunch right. Of right. Stuff done, so I got to catch the <clears throat> the last of the wave, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. So then the photons come in. What other things you got coming up? You um, think like or anything you can talk about? So. Yeah, no, we're still working on the um. What's we call it? Uh, the in, the um invader invader yeah yeah um no what's cool about that a lot of people are asking well when's invader coming uh invader we were saying was supposed to come in October but unfortunately it's not gonna happen mm. which so probably a lot of people knew that was gonna happen anyway but <laughs> I was shooting for it well the reason was was we had investors ready to rock mm. on it we were ready to pull the trigger but we were really doing our homework on the back end because we were trying to look at. Where do we want to be in 10 years? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we want to be basically just generating revenue for someone? Or do we mm. want somebody that's actually wants to be involved with the forward movement of either yeah, technology yeah. or interfacing or whatever? Because, you know, it might not be just mixtures. We might build something completely different that will just change yeah. day-to-day life. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. we don't know. So we're looking at it this way. So we end up going, you know what, let's just kind of back away from this and mm. still continue moving forward. But let's go ahead and build the Photon, which at the time was the X2 RMP, which mm-hmm. is the MIDI fader. Um, and use the funds from that to help bootstrap the right. Vader development. Yep. So basically all the stuff that's in the photon is development for the Nader. right 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 they can so translate they, over yeah yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. once we tune this out and get this locked in tight as a drum then that means that works really done in the invader yeah 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 that makes sense so and that's definitely a more practical way to go about yeah, it yeah then you also yeah. get now two products out of it you got yeah, to know that just yeah. for like single deck movement and stuff like that now here's another question a lot of people are asking why did you do two decks you know, we're at the time we're trying to keep our costs as low as possible, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but still quality. You yeah. know, I don't want you to think we're lacking that. But the issue was is to find the right um, four in, four out USB audio mm, codec. Mm. And there is a shit on the market. Yeah, yeah. We can yeah, find yeah. two in, two out. Right, 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 and right. Those are in abundance, but a four in, four out was just. Really yeah, and tackling that sort of thing yourself. <laughs> it's also, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a whole you, other yeah, no, thing. There like, are codecs that do that, but then you need AD converters, DA converters, yeah, all this extra stuff. It's turning into so a lot of extra at, money and time. Yeah, yeah you, the, the money fart would, would be astronomical. Yeah, exactly. So the cost of the product would shoot right up. So yeah. We're just trying to keep it in a thing, not just that, just knock this one out, get it all super clean, then focus on the next project. Um, and of course, the next project is going to probably be another section. Of the folk of the the invader, mm. so that will probably also be another product, right? Um, right. Which will probably be easier for us to work on and get yeah, done yeah. and get out. Yeah. yeah. Plus, it'll fine tune. But here's also another really positive aspect about waiting. Um, technology will continue to move. Yeah. Prices of these products that we're building at, yeah, say this year, continue will to drop. Be, will go down. Yeah, later. yeah, yeah. Or there might be newer, advanced technology that will yeah. cost you. The same as that we were building right. the year prior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For so sure. I mean, it, it's actually kind of a good thing that we don't drop it just yet, um, because one, we also need full support dedication from the team. Yeah. Um, and yeah. like I said, this this year has been full of tours and all types yeah, of crazy yeah, yeah, shit, yeah. you know. Uh, but yeah, it's it's coming along, man. Yeah, yeah. Piece by piece, <laughs> exhausted by exhausted. But hey, man, I love it. I mean, I wouldn't trade for nothing though. Yeah, man, it's, it's you've done a lot of really great work. And, Thank you. 
It's so, you man, you're out there doing really, the playground thing, which yeah. is dope. Those cats are super cool. They, yeah, they so actually fun. came by my shop uh, earlier this year, or was it last year? I'm not sure. I, la- they were there this year with Scratch Lords and all of them, but I'm not sure if they went by the shop then. But no, last no, year no. for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. last year at Nam, and they were uh, there. The only one guy, Pascal, was with like all the all the UK guys yeah. on their tour this year, but. Yeah, last year they all went out. And they were over there and we were just talking nerd for hours. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. fun. They love, like, Matt is, I um, mean, Matt's done so much for us, like, for Playground. It's, he, he's, like, an unofficial founder. And we're not founder, but, like, unofficial. I mean, like, he, you know, we don't pay anything, but he's, like, he's introduced us to so many people that we've worked with. He's, Man. he's just, he's such a great guy out there. Like, he's. He's like, yeah, literally, he's our, he's our own, like, we call his, his, his workshop our unofficial office, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. He's great dude, man. Yeah, so, nice. Any other questions, man? No, Sorry, I think that's it, man. Yeah. Like, Two-hour tangent thing. No, no, that's what it's all about, man. Yeah. No, yeah. We, yeah, I think that's it, man, really. Yeah, I guess it's future will hold what the future holds, and that's that's the story of Jesse Dean up to yeah, now. Well, man. I know one thing. We're going to be doing uh, Beat Geek and Portable Lounge again next yeah. year, for sure. Yeah, that was a crazy weekend. That was super fun. Like That was a blast, man. I'll definitely be there next year, without a doubt. Yeah. For those of you listening, I'll put links in the description. But Yeah, yeah was... well, not just that. We're trying to make it the ultimate tableist weekend. Yeah, man. It, 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 it was. It, if you think about it, look, at it. you had IDAs on Friday. And we have Portable Slanger and Be Geek on Saturday day, and also the Akai Beat Cipher. Yeah. Then we had World DMCs Saturday night. No, and then no. Sunday we had Portable Slanger Finals along with DJ City Link Up and the Beat Geek Trade yeah. Fit. Yeah. Every, it, was, just, it was constantly like, oh, wait, what's your name? I've seen you. Oh, you're that dude from what? X Country. You know, it was like was, dudes from every, from all over the world. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's kind of. Yeah, um, it, was, it was a blast, man. And what's dope about all of it. Minus the DMC part, you know what I'm saying? Because that's a whole different yeah, yeah, thing yeah. that, their you know, own thing. Yeah, yeah. but it's all free. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. free to the public. And that's what we want to do is make sure we give back um, yeah, yeah. all, like I paid into it. Simon paid into yeah. it. You know, uh, what should we call it? Playground paid into it. Yeah. And that covered the cost for people to admit yeah, it free. Yeah. Which is huge because you don't want to know what the number was. Oh, I just to yeah. get that location. No, I know. Even the ta- I do know. to get the, to get the <laughs> permits crazy. for that place. No, it's ridiculous. It's all ridiculous. Dude, the, ca- the town, the, the council, and also uh, what you call it, just the railway. All. The- yeah. My God, it's astronomical. So people are looking to put this stuff on. Be ready. You ain't making money. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I know. With, the, with Sample Music Festival every year, I'm out of you know a good chunk of change. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, so, so that was everybody just involved. Back, man. Yeah, it's just, totally. It's it, all giving it's, back. It's a great time. Like, and I, I, I don't feel like like I don't feel like I lost money. I just spent money to have an amazing weekend for a lot of people. That's yeah. what I think of it as. Like, yeah. But yeah. you know, man, it's yeah. It's just it's just part of it, you know. Yeah, and it really builds community like crazy. Like, well, I mean, that, I mean, I also look at it this way. It's like, okay, if you could put your funds into what you know for your not marketing, but just for just advancement yeah. of the community. What would you put your money into? Yeah. You know, I mean, we did the tour things because I thought it would be yeah, you know, yeah, to broaden yeah. the horizons so people might not have seen what it was like in Japan. Now they do. Yeah, yeah, people yeah. People have never seen it in the Philippines and now they know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, that or like say for instance, the, all the people that support your, your business and support the community put together something, you know, for them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and win some really crazy shit. Man. Yeah, that Jesse Dean custom reloot was looking sick. Oh, that thing like was the clear nice. lid. That was the only one in the world, man. Like, yeah, man, we can't reproduce that. Yeah, that was yeah. all. That was all casted, casted on your thing. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. wasn't. I was looking at the top. Yeah, I was like, it didn't look like like three D printed to me. No, it was not. It yeah, was all yeah, casted. Yeah. That was okay. casted your thing. So we actually made a mold and yeah. actually recast that thing. Nice. I wish I had a the right pressure top. It looked cool. <laughs> it had little bubbles in it, which I didn't, would be nice, I didn't, but it gave a character. I didn't notice. But, but it gave a character, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It made it show that it was a one-off. Yeah, like yeah, you, yeah, can't, yeah. you can't make another one. So. Yeah, sick. Well, I guess that's a good way to end it, man. Thanks a lot for having a chat. Hey, I appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, dude. Man, it was fun. <laughs> See ya. All right, man. Cheers. Cut this out.